you know, we can keep it real informal, ask lots of questions, and, and I'll be happy to answer the best I can. So, um, my name is Brad Albrecht, I'm the Director of Marketing and Social Dealing. Uh, we're managing uh, Facebook ads for uh, the good majority of our dealers. So a lot of the data I'm going to show is based on campaigns that, of, of Facebook ad campaigns that we're, you know, showing that we're managing for them so we can see the results. Okay. So what we're going to cover today is uh, Facebook ads. It's really it's, it's a two-part a two-part process. Um, you know, the first part of using Facebook ads is to build fans, you know, build this audience on Facebook, and then the second part, obviously, is what you guys probably most interested in: generating leads and and, and and promoting your dealership. What we see is that a lot of dealerships they want to jump to part two. You know, I just want to generate leads before they've really built up a large fan base, and it's a lot less effective. Um, you know, until you get that size. So first we're going to talk about, you know, the importance of growing likes and then get into using Facebook ads to promote your content, uh, get the content shared, reach a much larger audience, uh, which then can lead to generating leads and, and referrals from Facebook, okay? And then as, as a final part of that, we're going to talk a little bit about our content posting strategy on Facebook because for Facebook ads to, to, to really be successful, you need a good content strategy as well, because that's what's going to keep them coming back and getting them engaged in uh, your pages. Uh, just building a lot of likes on your page, just for the sake of building likes, doesn't have a lot of value in itself. So, uh, in, in terms of, of Facebook ads as an advertising medium, um, you know, one, we, there, there's a stat from Facebook itself that, the, that people who like your page uh, spend an average of two times more as customers than people who aren't connected to you on Facebook. And certainly that sounds logical, right? If, they're, if they like you on Facebook, you're going to be able to build a little better relationship with them. Um, the better relationships are going to translate to more value. But the big thing that, that we like about Facebook ads is that uh, you're really building an asset with Facebook ads. Um, think about your traditional advertising, newspaper, radio. When you advertise, you're paying to reach their audience. You know, every time I run an ad in the newspaper, I pay every time because of that, you know, and I pay to reach their readers. With Facebook ads, if you build this large audience, just like your email subscriber list, this audience is an asset that then you can advertise to for free over and over again. Um, this, you know, helps you like to drive leads at a much better ROI than you can with a lot of traditional uh, advertising leads. So, just some of the kind of highlights of using Facebook ads. Um, you know, they, they throw out the, the, the 900 million potential customers number. Uh, what we really care about is the potential customers that are within a, let's say, 50 mile radius of your store. Um, so we're not doing Facebook ads to reach 900 million. You know, we're doing Facebook ads to reach maybe 100, 200,000, you know, something in that range that are, have the ability to be prospects that will come by cars. And then that audience is going to share with their friends, which will also tend to be local, and you can reach, again, even a more viral audience. But we, we really uh, stress the importance of targeting in your market. Facebook does offer that ability to target by location, age, interest, uh, you know, giving you, uh, making more effective use of your, your advertising. And you can test ads and you can see what works. And uh, if you haven't done Facebook ads, you can, see, you can do cost per click campaigns or CPM campaigns. Um, both to your fan base, or you can advertise to, to people that don't follow. Um, obviously, we'll talk about sort of step one in Facebook advertising, building your likes. You know, we're going to focus just on advertising to uh, people who are connected to your page. And then you can use with, through pro promoting sponsored stories. That's what we get into, uh, not just promoting content as a sponsored story, but promoting uh, other specials and offers in your business through the sponsored story uh, mechanism and use that to drive leads. And then you can get a target mobile. Uh, this is a, a Facebook ad, this is a photographic come out recently that pulled a, a few stats from I thought were interesting. Uh, they're tracking obviously the success of Facebook ads and, and how they're doing. They see that uh, you know uh, on an influence level that it does have the ability to drive sales. You know the key stand I like from here is that you know 49% of the campaigns had a five times or greater ROI on the ad spend and 70% had at least a three, time, uh, three times or greater ROI. So they are, in, in terms of what they're measuring, in terms of response, uh, they're seeing this as an effective use of uh, 
of your ad dollars. As a comparison, uh, and this is a couple years old, uh, the stat, but the CPMs haven't changed too much for uh, your traditional. Uh, and it goes anywhere from, you know, down at, at you know, two, three dollars a thousand up to ten dollars a thousand. Right now, the dealers that we're running campaigns for, we average 40 cents a thousand for Facebook ads on when we do CPM and on a cost per click, it's like 82 cents. Uh, so the rates we're paying for Facebook ads just to reach the same number of people is substantially lower than what we get in the traditional. So yeah, we talked about, right, step one is growing fans, and once you start to build an audience to at least a critical mass, and depending on your market, that can be anywhere from 2,000 fans to, uh, you know, five or 10,000 fans if you're in more metro areas. Uh, you need to build that critical audience first, then you can start engaging them, then you can use that to build leads, but step one needs to be growing fans. Step two, then, is engaging fans, uh, getting them to promote your content out to their friends and, and family, and then getting into doing promotional things, promoting your vehicles, events, referrals, and specials. So this is the kind of numbers uh, that we're seeing when we do Facebook ad campaigns. So we can see here that a dealership, in terms of the, the big chart there, what they're doing in, in fan growth, uh, really explodes with Facebook ads. Their reach went uh, right, 68,000 weekly, which was up 10,000% compared to what they were before. Uh, obviously, very little uh, engagement and action before in terms of what they're getting. 350 new fans, um, so 6% increase on what, so that dealer, you know, went from, uh, was it 900 to 1200 uh, in a very short period of time. And this one, which is a good indication of how your content's doing, right? Because again, we don't want to build fans just for the sake of building them, but we look at the PTAP, we call people talking about this, how much they're sharing your content, how much they're commenting, getting them engaged. Yeah. So what kind of ad is posted here? The uh, right here. Okay, so that would be a, a simple like, uh, like campaign, um, and we do a variety. We test different ads depending on the the brand, the um, you know the market they're running in. Sometimes we think like, well, oh, this is a great ad, and we can do a similar version for a different dealer, mm -hmm. and that different dealer it won't necessarily work. So it could be, you know, hey, click if you like this car, or if you, you know, click if you love our brand, uh, you know, whatever, you know, Smith Chevrolet or something like that. Uh, just simple ads, and we'll, we'll look at a couple of examples here. Uh, but, but yeah, not, not more complicated, but it is just a general white campaign that, that, that was run. So not no sponsored stories. Uh, and in terms of what does it cost to build when we do these light campaigns, and again, we're just focusing on the light campaigns right now. Uh, for, for these dealers, uh, here we pull these stats. So for a $750 spend for one month, uh, they got 1,027 likes uh, for, so like 73 cents a like. Usually we'd say our goal is to spend, uh, if you get a dollar per like, then you're doing pretty good. Uh, I'm talking to a dealer, uh, I think it was the day before or something, and, and he said, you know, so, you know, uh, spend $800 and get 1,000 people, isn't it, or 1,000 likes, isn't that expensive? And I said, think back again to your email dates. If I could add 1,000 people to your email list for 800 bucks, and you can email them, you know, every single month, would it be worth it? And you say, yeah, you know what, yeah, that sounds right. So, if you think of this, this isn't, a, you know, a one-time benefit, but this is adding, you know, 1,027 people that I can, you know, send messages out to on a regular basis. This is a real asset for you. And, and then we think that's uh, an effect you should money at, you know, less than an hour in life. One of the other things you want to look at, again, you know, this is all your Facebook insight data, so this is not, uh, this is directly from them, but look at not just the new likes, uh, it's covered here, but you can see the unlikes. So just like with your email database, those are people who are unsubscribed. You want to watch that that number stays low, so that as you're growing fans, you're not just, you know, it's not a revolving door. You want to keep them, have them come in, have them stay in. If you see a lot of unlikes, you need to look at your content. Either you're not, you're not posting enough, you're posting too much promotional content and no content of value, um, you, you know, maybe you're posting too frequently, but you're doing something that they're unsubscribing. And you've got to keep these guys subscribing so you can keep the value of this asset. Um, here's another dealer down, again, kind of similar, uh, similar range, so, but even on a small campaign. So here's a simple $300 a month campaign, 448 likes, 
for 67 cents a light. So it's not that it takes big money to start building. And, and again, this is this is over a single month. You know, if you can get you know 500 fans a month, you know, for 300 bucks a month, you know, over a year that's 6,000 fans. Uh, 500 times 12, yeah, 6,000. Um, again, monitoring right here. You can see the unlikes staying real low. And then we we'll also go and check the people talking about this again. And we can see that as fan, as fan growth keeps growing, and we keep adding new fans, the PTAC grows higher and higher because we're getting them engaged, they're sharing the content. Yeah, so real quick, what is the PTAC again? What does that mean? So, sure. That, that stands for people talking about this, people talking about your page. So anytime they comment on your page, they'll share one of your content posts, uh, click on it. If they take an action, right, if they're getting involved with your content, that falls in PTAC. And that's important because as you, you know, a thousand fans is not just the value of a thousand fans, but you want to reach the friends of fans. Um, and that's what like on. Um, uh, the idea that those thousand fans, when they take action on their content, it shares it, right, on their wall, um, shares it with their friends. So here for a dealership that has 10,000 likes, the 10,000 likes is great, right? You have 10,000 fans that they can talk to. But the big thing is that the friends of fans that they can potentially reach is 3.4 million. So now you're talking about, again, for what we spent to get those 10,000 likes, you can reach you know, the size of an audience that you could reach with, I mean, a metro newspaper. So, uh, this really gives you, again, this is, you see people talking about this. As that number stays high, then the weekly total, total reach uh, stays up as well. Yeah. How, how do you get the people talking about this when they, like, share? Yeah, when they share, yep. If they, right, so you see, you see a Facebook post, if, if I click and I go, I like this post, or I make a comment on it, I'm like, hey, this is really cool, or I should, you know, I'm sharing it with my friends, that, so now you've reached me, and as soon as I make a comment, share, I do something with it, I'm sharing it with my uh, 500 friends that I have, or 1,000 friends, right? So that's, that's sort of the viral benefit of, of Facebook oh, okay. and social, okay? okay. Yeah. When you uh, do a sponsored story, does it reach friends of bands? If, if, they, if, they, if they engage with that, right? If I'm just doing a sponsored story and nobody's taking any action on it, then no, right? But if they, if I click, right? If I get involved with a sponsored post, mm -hmm. I click on it because I like it, I comment on it, then again, the same thing. Okay. And that's why we're going to look here kind of at the end when, after we've talked about Facebook ads, talk a little bit, I made that comment earlier that great content is important. This is the reason why, because if you want to get people talking about your content, you need to have good content on the right frequency and the right variety of content. And we'll look at some of those examples in a little bit. All right, so we'll lead right into it now. So why are good content strategies important? Um, all right, so not all pressures are created equal. Uh, just as there's some different uh, numbers you can pull from your Facebook Insights page. So just probably highlight quickly what they are. Paid impressions, those are impressions generated from advertising. So if I'm doing a, a CPM campaign, right, cost per thousand, that's my paid impressions, is what my ad can reach by itself. Organic impressions, those are impressions generated from your posts, sharing and likes from your fans. That's, that's sort of right, that's your free advertising. All right. um, and earned media is the additional impressions generated when a user clicks on your ad. So when we ask about a responsive story, when they, when they click on the ad and they, they engage with my sponsored content, the ad came up, when the ad came up to me and I saw the sponsored post, that's a paid impression. I click on it and I share it with my friends. Well, you're not paying, you're not paying for the impressions that all my friends saw, right? So that's an earned impression. That makes sense? So, all right. Um, again, why we we'll talk about why content's so important? Because when, when compared to paid impressions alone, Organic impressions have 20% more ad recall, 9% more awareness, and 6% more purchase intent. So organic impressions are worth a lot more than just your paid ad impressions. Uh, and again, it kind of makes sense if you think about, um, it's one thing for a person to see an ad or a sponsored story, but if I want to share that sponsored story with my friends, I've given it, I've given it a little 
recommendation. I'm going to build the Brett seal of approval, my friend. So now they're going to pay a little bit more attention to it, which is why uh, why ad recall goes up a little higher and, and awareness goes up because it's got an endorsement. So this is just a uh, and this is where the, the data came from. This is from a Nielsen survey, um, but they just show the difference again between uh, just the ad exposure by itself and the ad plus organic impression. And you can see again how much higher ad recall is, how much higher awareness is, and how much higher purchase purchase intent is. So these are the impressions that we want to get is using Facebook ads but and content to get a good strategy. Alright, so uh, what do we what do we consider good content? Um, I like to say that you know you're, you're okay to be an auto dealer. We don't, we don't like, we're not big fans of the, you know, the cat riding and the tricycle kind of story. Uh, you might get people to click on it and share it or something like that because they, you know, these are funny or something like that. But at the end of the day, I want people interested in cars, right? They're, they're interested in, in your dealership or, or in your community and what you have to say in an automotive sense. Because to, 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 to post content that has nothing to do with, with auto, you're saying like people are like I'm not interested in cars at all. Well, you really want to reach people that have no interest in cars. Let's let's focus on posting content that gets you know people that that have an interest in car because then we can potentially turn these into customers. Um, so what we like to do and again you need to have a nice uh, mix of content. You can't do all promotion, um, but uh, promotion has its place. So we talk about the three E's that you want to either educate entertain or engage. And there's a lot to talk about outside your dealership, but that has uh, has to do with automotive. You know, I, I commute, you know, almost an hour a day or each way. So I'm, if I'm in my car two hours a day, my, that's, that's a good portion of my life. There's a lot going on and there's a lot we can talk about as a consumer. Not just what's going on in your dealership, but what's going on, you know what I mean? I like to talk about satellite radio. Let's talk about, you know, anything cool and Bluetooth that helps me do hands-free. Um, you know, what about you know, new nav, nav systems and GPS? And, I mean, think about all the kind of things around the time people spend in cars. There's a lot of different things you can talk about um, other than just what's going on in your dealership. And then you should mix in manufacturing content as well um, and promote the brand. In terms of the kinds of things you post, photos and videos get better shared, get more shares and comments than just text by itself or links. Um, but again, and you do do a, I mean a mix is better. Don't do all photos, don't do all videos. Um, but you should do good, you know, a good mix of photos, links, videos, um, promotional things. Um, again, don't be afraid to promote. A lot of people tell you that social media is about conversations, and people don't go to Facebook to buy things. Well, it, that's true. Facebook is not an e-commerce site. However, these are all consumers, and. In, in a survey, um, the number one reason people say they follow a business is to get special offers and incentives. People are selfish. They're, you know, what's in it for me? I, you know, I, I don't want to follow you just for the sake of following you, but if I get something in return, it makes it that much better. Um, you should post daily, um, but again, you watch your stats to determine, one, which days are best for which types of content. We talk about both uh, you know, the PTAP, number you can look at, you can even look at your comments, your clicks, and you might see that, uh, you know, there's certain days a week that if you do, you know, one promotional post a, uh, one promotional post a week, that you'll get better responses on Thursdays versus Mondays. So that, that's okay to say, all right, you know, later in the week's better for promotional, and maybe Mondays is a good day for uh, something a little more educational, and Fridays is a good day for something fun. Mix it up and see what they respond to for your audience, and not every Dealership is the same because you're all in different markets, all have different consumer sets. Uh, this is an example of uh, so this is an example of a post we did, and I want to show you guys what the difference is on getting people engaged, but but using it with a dealer that does Facebook ads and a dealer that does not do Facebook ads. So here, this is just kind of a fun post, right? Age check. What is this? Right, right button, right there. Um, in here, we have 11 people like this, uh, and 12 people commented. I sort of covered up one of the comments there. The guys say it's high beams. You know, again, when he, when he puts high beams, 
that shares that his, he's sharing that with his friends because he made a comment on the law. You got that, you got that both? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, we would say in general, uh, if, if we do just a simple post and you know a lot of people like it, well, comment. That, that's a decent post. It, it's you know people took some action. They're interested. This is the identical post on a different dealer in a different market. Um, and now you can see that he had 180 people uh, liked it, and he had 133 comments, and 47 and 100 people saw this post. So this is a dealer that does Facebook ads, and this is a dealer that was documenting Facebook ads. You can see how it, how it increases your reach and, and how you can, one, once you get a build a bigger audience with Facebook ads, he's getting a lot more people involved. Uh, we talk about sponsored stories too. This is the kind of thing that you can do as a sponsored story. So I know a lot of times when people talk about sponsored story, you think about a story or something you posted that's general educational content. You can do a Facebook offer and do that as a sponsored story. So you can take, you know, this buy one oil change, get one free for life on geo vehicles. Um, create this as a Facebook offer, then go in and do a sponsored story for this offer and advertise it out, and now we're going to increase your reach with this, with this offer. Um, so in this case, I think this, um, so for Castle Chevrolet, we had 15,000 fans at this point, and this is just like I said, just this last August, so a week or so ago. Um, I think this was out four days maybe, and yet 97 people claim it, and they claim the software they want to move. So now we've moved into, you know, we're generating leads here. We're getting people into the service department, and we're taking that that original investment of 15, you know, of what it took to get to 15,000 fans, and now it's starting to turn this into money. Uh, and then you can see as well that, so here it'll tell you how much it reached. So even though he has 15,000 fans, and not all of them necessarily of his fans would see that post, depending when they came on Facebook, he still reached 20,000 people um, with this offer. And 238 engaged users, 127 people, talking about this, which means they didn't just see it, but they actually you know, did something with it beyond just the 97 claim. And, and I didn't pull a whole list. I can see, you know, on Facebook Insights, you can see for every single post what your reach engaged users and talking about numbers are. For the week, this was his most popular content. And again, it goes back to it's okay to promote. Again, some people will tell you now you've got to be careful about promoting. People, this, this got more action and, uh, and reached more people than some of the educational and entertaining and, and other posts for the week because it was, it was a benefit to the consumer. I talked about mixing it up, and this is going to be kind of an overwhelming chart. Uh, so something, you know, if you want to copy the PowerPoint, uh, you can kind of look at it later. But this is sort of an example of, on a monthly schedule, Facebook and Twitter, how often we post, you know, so we're doing one post a day. It's sort of color coded at the top. There, there's the different kinds of, of comment, or kinds of content that we're posting. Um, industry news, right? Uh, company news on your dealership, promotion, lead generators. And then we break up the other stuff into educational tips, things for their, again, that's a value for users, something entertaining. And then engaging content would be uh, asking people questions, doing, if you do surveys, if you do staff, trying to get them involved. Open-ended questions are going to lead people to respond, as opposed to, here's just what's happening today. Well, that might be interesting, but that doesn't necessarily invoke a, a response. It doesn't get me engaged. But if you ask open-ended questions, you do surveys, you know, hey, what was your first car? You know, does anybody remember a car that looks like this? Right? Now we're asking questions, trying to, we're trying to suck, you got to suck the consumer in, get them to take an action. Uh, but you see, so here the idea is that, right, different kind of post each day of the week, uh, and not necessarily the same thing every day. So I wouldn't do company news every single Monday, because what you find out is, while I think Facebook stats are that half the people are on every day, the other half of the people are not on every day. Uh, there's some people that, that might only get on Facebook, uh, you know, a couple times, two, three times a week. And it might be on certain days. So if you only do company news on Mondays, there might be a portion of your, you know, this Monday audience, they'll never see your other content. You can't just assume because I mix it up and post something, you know, different the five days a week. Um, 
that, oh, that my audience is seeing all five of them. It's not everybody's on all, all the time. So you want to mix that up a little bit. So, but that's like this, there's, I think this could vary a little bit, you know, by market, uh, by dealership, and what you have to talk about, how many promotions you have in, you know, offline in the dealership uh, versus on, on coming up with your own schedule. But this is a, just a sample. So now let's talk a little bit on, on how to do Facebook ad campaigns themselves. Um, so when you go in, Facebook ads is set up, you can either do a right campaign versus a sponsored story. Uh, we're not going to really talk about Facebook now has the op op opportunity to do um, promoted posts. Uh, that's relatively new. We're doing that with some of our dealers. I don't have enough stats at this point that I want to start throwing those things out. So we're really just talking about uh, right campaigns and sponsored stories today. But you know that there's there's new options that they're rolling out all the time. Um, cost per click versus CPM campaigns. Uh, so if you think about how this works, right? Cost per click, you only pay when they click. So that's that's efficient in terms of if the ad doesn't appeal to people, it doesn't cost you any money, right? Because no one's clicking on it. Versus the CPM campaign, if I set it up and target it to a large audience, I can have a bad ad that. I'm paying a lot of money for it from a CPM level, even though it's not getting any results. What we like to do is I'll start an ad on a cost per click campaign and make sure, right? Because now I'm only paying if it works. As soon as I see yes, this ad's getting clicks, then I move to a CPM and I'll switch it to a, a CPM campaign. Because a CPM campaign is cheaper to run. And it also tends to work a little better in terms of hitting uh, Giving enough impressions to hit my budget. So if I have a five hundred dollar budget for a month of this campaign, CPM campaigns are a little more effective with Facebook's algorithm to spend that five hundred dollars over the period uh, using the CPMs. So, but I don't want to just guess at what works. Again, we have the ability. It's very easy to go create an ad, uh, test it, and find out what works. Do that. You know, do your testing on the cost per click, and then roll it over to CPM. Uh, targeting. We never, we never run anything that hits the whole country. Uh, to us, there's no value as a dealership to try to get fans from all over the country. Uh, you, want, you want to reach people who have the ability to come in. You know, we look at the oil chain sponsored offer. You know, people out of market are not going to take advantage of that offer. What we want is we want people to be able to come into the dealership so we can sell. Uh, so don't just build fans um, from all over the world just to build fans. We always we generally target almost uh, uh, almost all dealerships, 50 mile radius. Uh, depending on the rural areas, you have to expand a little bit, but that's where we'll start. Um, so deal targeting, we say, is a month. Uh, depending on how big the audience, potential audience is, once we geo target it, then we look at targeting by age or interest. Um, you can target people that are interested in, in brands, right? They're interested in Chevy brands. If, if you're a Chevy dealer. Ad design, we keep it simple. Simple image, uh, one we think that will engage people. Uh, not a ton of content, we're not trying to fill the whole ad. I just want to get them engaged, I want to build them as a fan. I'm not trying to sell them everything in this ad. I want to get them following my page and seeing my content. And then I have a lot of content I can share with them later. Once you like me, I can start sending you other content later. I don't need to close the sale in the ad for these people. Uh, and then uh, for linking the ads on um, like sponsored content that you're promoting, Facebook tabs work better than your website um, in terms of sending, clicking through and sending people. Uh, there's a couple studies that have been done. And people are in Facebook because it, I mean, it's a social community. They like Facebook and they want to be in Facebook. So as soon as they click on an ad and it takes them out to your website, now they've left Facebook and that's where they want to be. And what the research has shown is that when they click and even go to your website, and this wasn't this was a study that wasn't done specifically for auto dealers, but business in general, they tend not to stay and they go back into Facebook. However, if you click and send them to your tab, and you have maybe inventory on a tab, you might have referral offers on a tab, you might have coupons tab, um, any of those things. Now they're staying within Facebook, which is, is the, the medium they want to be in. They'll stay much longer, and you have a better chance of. Uh, having them stick around and then look through your content. So that's our preference if you have that option. Uh, uh, this is what it looks like in Facebook when you go and set up an ad. Uh, 
So it starts at the top, um, you know, choose a Facebook destination, enter a URL, um, and, it, and it pulls up uh, the dealership. Again, in this case, we have multiple dealerships. But starting with what would you like to do? Do you want to do a live campaign? Do you want to promote a page post? Um, and there's some advanced options. In this case, we're going to be doing a live campaign because, again, that's where you want to start. Um, you can do something as simple for here, you know, click like if you're a car fan in the Boston area. Um, so short text to entice them, and then select a relevant image, and then it goes to several screens, it's just sort of scrolling down in Facebook, but we're breaking it up. Um, once you've done that, now, now you have the option to do your targeting, uh, target right by city, uh, zip code, um, include cities within, and see we have 50 miles check. An important thing to look at up here is see the 2.5 million people? That's the potential size. It's saying this is how many people I have in these parameters that you can reach. <coughs> you need at least um, at least 100,000 people. So if you see, because let's say it's real rural, and you're getting less than 100,000 people in your potential audience, that's too small. You have to expand that out and hit a bigger audience. But you just, what we've seen is it's just your ad won't get shown very much. And you might have a $500 a month budget or a $1,000 a month budget. It won't get spent, and, and then you're not. Uh, reaching as many people as you potentially can. Uh, once you do that, you can go down to gender and age, um, set the age, uh, set you know, broad categories for interest levels. Generally to start, we don't set interest levels. As we're starting uh, on initial light campaigns. We just want to promote to people in the radius of our market. Uh, you can do the interest levels later when you're promoting specific, specific things or uh, trying to reach out maybe a little larger area and you need to find ways to narrow that down. Um, and then here I target fans not connected already. So for a light campaign, we want only, only people not connected to Audubon USA. Uh, in that case, right, if we're doing a light campaign, we don't need to advertise that people already like us. We're trying to get more likes at this point. And then the, the final kind of screen. Let, let me ask you before you go there. Yes, sir. The minimum album is, you say, 100,000? 100,000, yeah. yeah. If it's smaller than that, it's just too small. And then I would expand, I would expand the radius out, or, you know, if you had picked a zip, and it was up less than 100,000, then move out to your city, or something like that. Okay. Okay? okay. Uh, and finally, this is the easy part. Um, you put in your campaign budget, right? Uh, here, it's, you know, it says 300 lifetime budget. Uh, if we set this up as, see, this is named Autobahn July, we'll set up as a monthly campaign. Uh, we'll do an August campaign set as a separate campaign each month. And then the goal is to spend that much money by the end of the campaign. Uh, you have your start date, end date. You know, on Google's algorithm, right, to say here, it's in 30 days. Spend 30, uh, 300 hours and place the order. Uh, this is just kind of final on. Uh, why targeting is so important? Uh, again, this is another part of the infographic cutout from Facebook, but uh, kind of the key stats are over here that in if you to reach the right people, that there's a 25% cost savings um, when you target 95% uh, 